There are thousands of old abandoned mines like this all over the country and although they've been shuttered for decades, they're still causing a serious pollution problem in our rivers today. I'm Madeleine Cuff, the environment reporter for New Scientist, and I'm here at Commissworth Mine in Wales to find out what impacts these old crumbling mine workings are having on the health of our rivers. This is the Commissworth Mine in mid Wales and this is one of the most important uh, lead and copper zinc mines anywhere in, in Britain. This particular project is looking at the historical impacts, uh, the legacy impacts of metal mining in British rivers. And I think what's interesting for me is the relationship between changes in flood frequency and flood magnitude and the remobilisation and the reworking of historical contamination. These buildings are ruins now, how can they still be causing a pollution issue? A lot of the, the waste, particularly the, the fine grain waste, sand and silt sized material, were discharged directly into the nearest river, which is the Afon Isworth here. It was dispersed by runoff and floods all the way down to the uh, Cardigan Bay, which is probably 30 miles away. And the agricultural soils, the floodplain adjacent to the river, was inundated. The contaminants were deposited there and things like lead and zinc don't disappear. If that material is ingested by, by animals, it then causes a significant uh, health issue. This is a small river in mid Wales, but this has been repeated throughout the UK. It's been re repeated actually throughout many parts of the world. So it's not the mining sites themselves, which are especially problematic. It's actually the river channels and floodplains which act as a diffuse sort of contamination. Some of the concentrations that we're recording in these floodplain soils are in excess of 20, 30,000 milligrams per kilogram lead. That actually would constitute a pretty decent low grade ore. And this is present in floodplain sediments. Wow. And that's where our animals graze and that's where we live. As a consequence of climate change, we're getting more frequent and larger floods. That is causing higher rates of bank erosion and that contaminated material is being brought back into the channel and then flushed downstream. Something on the order of 1,500 square kilometres of floodplains have metal concentrations above trigger levels in terms of uh, human and actually livestock values. So this really is a major issue. We are looking at the, the patterns and contamination across the whole of the uh, UK using um, a mapping and modelling technique. In particular, we've been looking at the relationship uh, between metal contaminations and the presence of antimicrobial resistance genes. My name's Chris Thomas. I'm a zoologist and ecologist working with Mark on the ecology of these contaminated rivers. Down there? Yeah, I've got my wellies on, so let's do it. Yeah? yeah. <laughs> We're a few kilometres downstream now from the mine. Why have we stopped here? Well, this is the stuff we're interested in. This is fine sediment, clay, and it's got lots of organic material in it, lots of bacteria in here. This is also contaminated. What we're interested in is how bacteria in particular that have evolved to cope with these high levels of metal contamination affects their antimicrobial resistance levels. Now, antimicrobial resistance is an ancient battle between bacteria, it's found throughout the environment. But there's evidence now emerging from around the world which suggests that the pathways, the biochemical pathways that bacteria use to fight each other are also the ones that can be influenced by resistance against metals. So it might be that they're pre-adapted to be resistant to certain antibiotics or families of antibiotics. What are the types of things we should be worried about? Floodwaters will push this over the land. This gets ingested directly. Now, we don't know if that's taken up by the livestock, but the concern is that they could be. And of course, bacteria can exchange genes as well as the bacteria themselves. So it might promote the spread of antimicrobial resistance genes throughout a whole community of bacteria, some of which may not be living here. Direct contamination of, say, livestock uh, from the heavy metals themselves 
can cause problems and can accumulate in body tissues and in fat. But antimicrobial resistance affects the ability of a veterinarian to treat an infection. The way we examine the antimicrobial resistance levels in the bacteria here is that we're, we're gene hunting. We're looking for the specific genes that by themselves or in combination confer resistance to certain families of antibiotics. Do you think then that the pollution from this mine and other mines like it is accelerating perhaps the development of bacteria that are resistant to antibiotics? Well that's the question we're asking. We're certainly looking at the distribution of the contaminant metals and the genes that confer resistance to different families of antibiotics and is that linked to metal contamination. And the other question we're asking is, how does that get distributed in our catchments? We've got metal arising from metal mining, in this case of the headwaters of this river, and we've got farming down towards the coast, and then we've got estuarine fisheries and beyond. And we want to know how the flow of these uh, agents, these genes which can be transferred from bacteria, as well as the bacteria themselves, are mobilised in these river systems. In terms of cleaning the rivers up, do you think that the government is doing enough? Like, what should be happening? The way it can be dealt with is by management. After we have major floods, particularly in metal mine affected areas, it would be really important to restrict livestock access, um, sheep and, and cattle grazing those lands after floods, because the principal mechanism whereby the contaminants get into the food chain, get into animals in particular, and perhaps into ourselves, is by the animals actually ingesting the sediment. We do have that information. It's just making sure that it's actually provided to the general public, to regulators in the form they can use. And I think we've been very slow in terms of understanding the problem, because problems like plastics, sewage, have captured the public's attention. But something like this, which is a legacy which no one owns, no one is responsible for, we've forgotten. It is a major, major problem. Not just in the UK, but worldwide. It's been really interesting to learn that from the site of what seems like a kind of historical ruin that has no bearing on the present day, that actually this was the source of some really serious contaminants that have now entered our rivers and our floodplains and our sediment and are causing a real problem today and I think what is most shocking and fascinating is the fact that this could be entering the food chain, could be poisoning livestock um, and is getting worse because of climate change and you know that this is a problem that we can't ignore like we have done for decades but actually that we probably need to arrest and start managing before the climate gets worse and you know these contaminants rear their heads again and again and again